everyone and welcome back to Kilowatt Auto. In today's video, I want to evaluate autopilot on my usual back road course to see if the gains being made with the full self-driving beta are translating into improvements with regular autopilot. My car is currently running software version 2020.44.25 and it is equipped with full self-driving. However, I have not been lucky to get the full self-driving beta and will be utilizing standard autopilot and auto steer in today's video. If you haven't seen any of the FSD beta videos, the new software is at the point where it's capable of taking the driver from point A to point B with minimal driver intervention. As soon as I'm able to get my hands on this new software, I will begin to post videos on its capabilities and in looking over my channel analytics, nearly 95% of my views are coming from people who are not subscribed. So if you end up enjoying today's video and want to see more autopilot and eventual full self-driving videos, be sure to get subscribed. For the purposes of today's video, any time that my hands are at the 9 and 3 position on the steering wheel, I will be in control of driving the car. And once autopilot is activated, you will see the blue wheel on the center screen, as well as the blue lane lines, which will indicate that the car is in control of all driving functions. And if I turn the wheel, press the brake, or hit the gear selector, autopilot will be automatically deactivated. And I'll also leave one hand at the base of the wheel in case I need to take over. So I tested this road several months ago and the car performed okay, and at the time it was an improvement over my initial testing which occurred in early 2020. However, it did require me to take over at one point, and this occurred when it lost sight of the lane lines and appeared as if it was going to drive off the road. And this seemed to spike some controversy in the comment section, and it's important to remember that auto steer is still a beta feature, and its continuous use by early adopters is what drives its progress. I do understand why people may have been alarmed about the car putting me in a dangerous situation, and I will reiterate that in its current build, the driver acts as a co-pilot anytime autopilot is in use, and they should be ready at a moment's notice to take over. But with all of that said, we can continue on today's uncut drive, and during the less eventful portions, I will speed the footage up. And at the end of today's video, I will also be including the metrics from today's drive, which will give you a good idea how winter driving and colder temperatures affects the Tesla Model 3's efficiency. So it's at this point in the drive where we will reach the bend in the road that I had to take over at last time. We are currently in an incline and at the apex of the hill, you can see the road will veer to the left. And last time this caused the car to drive directly at the embankment. And oddly enough, in today's drive, the car did a really nice job of slowing down and proceeding through this area with no issues whatsoever. And ahead you'll see another similar situation where the road bears to the left at the apex of an incline and the car again takes the curve with no issues maintaining its lane. This next stretch of road offers several S-curves and I'd also like to point out how difficult it is to see the lane lines. And because the roads were recently salted, you can see that the center line especially blends in with the rest of the road, but despite this, the car is no problem mapping where the lane is and taking each curve with ease. Next up, you'll see the car incorrectly map a stop sign which is on the far right side of the road for the road which is merging with the one I'm currently driving on. And it does begin to slow down and you'll see it puts the stop sign on the road, but eventually it realizes the error and resumes its course as usual. And in the FSD beta, the car is capable of mapping the roadway, including debris and other obstacles, but I've yet to see it recognize a pothole and avoid it. And you can see in Autopilot's current build, it drives directly through the pothole on the right side of the road which I normally would have swerved around. And despite this, it slows down nicely for the car making a left turn, and then once the lane is clear, ramps its speed back up to the speed limit. In the past, accelerations and decelerations have sometimes been very jerky, and over the last several months, I've noticed that speed control has smoothed out a lot and become more human-like. Now we have the first of three stop signs placed due to the road being partially collapsed. And at the first stop, the car does overshoot the sign a little bit, but it does stop completely and proceed normally after I direct it to with the driver's stock. 
And one thing to note is that in the FSD beta, I would not have had to interact with the car whatsoever at this intersection. It would have not only stopped on its own, but also proceeded without any driver intervention. The next stop does not occur at an intersection, so the car has to visually recognize it before it will know to slow down. At about 200 feet, the alert populates on my screen and you'll see the car begin to slow down. And after I push down on the gear selector, the car will then proceed. And you'll see me touch the scroll wheel on the steering wheel, which I did several other times in this drive to adjust the car's speed due to the tight curves ahead. This was another area where my car struggled last time, and you'll see in this case it handled all of the curves with ease and does not cross over the double yellow line. The car will once again have to visually recognize the stop sign ahead, and in this case it has less than 100 feet to do so and then slow down to a complete stop. And as I did in last week's video, I will run this portion of the road again to demonstrate how the car is unable to handle the collapsed roadways. Surprisingly enough though, it will be able to handle the very last stop sign once we turn around. And likely if I did have the full self-driving beta, the car would be able to handle these collapsed roadway situations without any issues. This is the first point during this drive where I disengage autopilot because there is a woman walking on the right side of the road, and although my car did recognize her and display her on the center screen, it did not appear to adjust its lane position to a spot I was comfortable with, so I took control to move the car over. Now that we've turned around, we will once again attempt to let the car handle the collapsed roadway, and it's still not able to address the first two stop signs, but it is able to accurately navigate the last stop, so we'll quickly speed through the first two, and then you can see it does identify the last stop sign visually, and then comes to a complete stop, and after I direct the car that it's safe to proceed, it then routes itself through the intersection and steers clear of the cones and collapsed portion of the road. This likely was much easier for the car as very little of the road was unusable, so the car was able to still maintain its lane and simply shift slightly to the left in order to avoid the cones. And once again, had I been running the FSD beta, I'm confident that the car would have been able to handle all three of these situations without any assistance. So in total, today's drive was 25.6 miles round trip with an average efficiency of 306 watt hours per mile. The ambient temperature was 34 degrees Fahrenheit and I did run the heat set to 70 degrees Fahrenheit and seat warmer at level one. When I left for this drive, my state of charge was 252 miles and upon returning home to my garage, it was 216 miles, which is a difference of 36 miles. So even though I only drove 25.6 miles, this illustrates how winter driving will translate into quite an offset from the displayed range of the car. And for real-time usage and range, it is much more accurate to use the energy graphs when planning routes and identifying how much range is left in the car. And for a true one-to-one -one mile of battery range per mile driven, my average watt hours per mile would need to be around 235, which isn't really feasible during colder temperatures when running the heat. Overall, I think the car performed much better today than the last time I tested this back road, and cornering was much improved, and the car did not cross a double yellow line whatsoever. I can't say if this is a direct result of the data coming from the full self-driving beta or autopilot's natural progression, but it is certainly promising for the future of full self-driving. And if you're interested in learning more about range and battery degradation, check out my video from last week where I talked about battery degradation over the first year of ownership that I'll link at the end of this video. And if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit the like button. And if you made it this far, be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss future autopilot videos. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch my videos and I'll see you in the next one.